Hey everybody. Today we're talking about continuous random variables. A continuous random variable is just a random variable that can take values over an entire range. Intuitively, a variable that you can measure to any degree of accuracy that you like. Here's a few examples. Pick a random dog at the local animal shelter and measure the length of its tail. Or um, take an exact temperature reading at the South Pole at a random moment. Or select a call to a customer service line at random and measure its length. By contrast, a discrete random variable can take values only in a non-continuous set. For example, roll a die 20 times and count the number of sixes. You could get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., but you couldn't get 1 half or 2 thirds or 3 and a quarter. Probabilities are harder to describe for continuous random variables than for discrete ones. There are infinitely many possible outcomes for a continuous random variable, and so any individual result is essentially impossible. For instance, consider a call to that customer service line. We might say that it lasts 150 seconds, but the actual length, if we measured it more accurately, might be 150.1 or 150.05 or any one of uncountably many other values. So the probability that the call length is actually exactly 150 seconds is essentially zero. Still, however, it seems like some call lengths are more likely than others. We expect a call that lasts 150 seconds to be a lot more likely than a call that lasts three hours, for instance. So we need to be able to talk about probabilities for continuous random variables in a more meaningful way than to just say that the probabilities are always zero. We're going to get around the problem by considering only probabilities of ranges of values. We're going to look at things like the probability that that call is between 140 and 160 seconds. And probabilities like this will frequently be non-zero. One way to visualize a continuous random variable is by using a density curve. Then probabilities over ranges are to be understood as areas under that density curve. Here's a picture. Um, I've drawn a random variable x that can take values between 0 and 4 with decreasing probability. The region that I've shaded there represents the probability that x falls between 1 and 2 on some given trial. Now, just looking at this picture, we can see that the probability that x falls between 1 and 2 is going to be less than the probability that it falls between 0 and 1 because there's more area under this curve from 0 to 1 than from 1 to 2. Similarly, the probability is going to be greater that the value of x falls between 1 and 2 than between 2 and 3. We can estimate the probability that x falls between 1 and 2 by estimating the area of that shaded region. In this case, I got about 3 tenths. So there's about a 30% chance that x falls between 1 and 2 on any given trial. Um, this density curve gets called the PDF, the probability density function. Any legitimate PDF has to have a couple of basic properties. First of all, it always needs to be positive. This is reflecting the fact that, po that probabilities are always positive, never negative. So probability density should always be positive too. Secondly, the total area under the graph of a legitimate PDF should always be 1. This is encoding the idea that when we do a probability experiment, we have to get some value of x out. Now, I think a probability density function and a density curve um, is a fairly intuitive idea. Unfortunately, it's generally very hard to calculate with. Technically, when you're computing those areas, you're doing um, a, an integral, and in particular, an improper integral every time. If you haven't had calculus yet, don't worry too much about this line. The bottom line here is just that these calculations can be difficult. We get around having to do them all the time by instead referring to cumulative distribution functions, or CDFs, of the random variable. A cumulative distribution function, or CDF, gives you back the probability that a random variable takes on a value no greater than the x you specify on some given trial. It literally is the accumulated probability. I think a picture is helpful here. Here's the PDF of the same random variable we saw a moment ago, y equals little f of x. 
I've shaded the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. The accumulated probability for x equals 2. So this is capital F of 2. The CDF at 2. Notice that as x gets bigger, capital F of x always gets bigger too because you're accumulating more probability as x increases. We can use the CDF, capital F of x, to compute the probability that the random variable falls into any given range, like this. The probability that x falls between a and b is big F of b minus big F of a. The picture makes this pretty obvious. Here, I'm getting the shaded region by taking the area to the left of x equals 2 and subtracting off the area to the left of x equals 1. That is to say, big F of 2 minus big F of 1. The simplest continuous random variables are those with uniform distributions. A uniformly distributed random variable is just one that takes equal probabilities on intervals of equal width. Roughly speaking, you're thinking of it as meaning that every value of x in a particular range is equally likely. Um, to say all of this a little bit differently, a uh, random variable with a uniform distribution is just one that has a constant PDF. Here's an example. Here I'm showing you the graph of um, a continuous random variable that has a uniform distribution where the um, values can fall between 1 and 7. So it's a constant function, the PDF is a constant function, between 1 and 7. Now this total area has to be 1. Since I have a width of 6, the height has to be 1 sixth. Knowing the height of this rectangle lets me compute probabilities um, for any range of x. For instance, the probability that x falls between 2 and 7 is going to be the width of that interval, um, 7 minus 2, divided by the height of the graph, 1 sixth. So 1 sixth times 7 minus 2 is 5 sixths. I have an entire video on uniform distributions. I'll throw a link up top.